You're listening to Simple Roots Radio, episode number 99. And today we're talking about how to break bad habits and form good ones that will last a lifetime. Welcome to Simple Roots Radio with Alexa Sherm. Alexa believes that simplicity in life is the key to achieving true and lasting health. And now your host, Alexa Sherm. Welcome back to this podcast. My name's Alexa, and this is the place to get healthy, live happy, and find more joy. Today, we're talking about all three of those things, getting healthy, living happy, and finding more joy. And it comes from hacking your mind, from getting in and helping to understand what is it that's gonna bring lasting change, not just this forced change, have to do it, strategies and diets and all this other mindset that we have going on, but really, how can we start to enjoy the things that we're actually doing and make health work for us. So that's what we're talking about today. But before we get started with this podcast, I just wanna say, can you believe it that we're on episode 99? I thank you so much for being here, for sticking with me through this journey, and for joining in. If you've just recently found Simple Roots Radio, I really am so encouraged by you, and I'm so thankful for all the emails and comments that I get that tell me how much this podcast has changed your life. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I honestly am so honored that you're here, that next week on the 100th episode, I have a little special giveaway for those of you who've stuck around and been a part of this journey. So coming up next week, you're gonna find out what the 100th episode giveaway is. But in order to be registered for that giveaway, you have to leave a rating and review. Of course, if you don't have a lot of good things to say about the show, you can keep those to yourself. But if you have something positive you'd like to say about Simple Roots Radio, I would love for you to leave a rating review over on iTunes. This isn't just to pump up my own ego, but honestly, this is the lifeblood of the show. It's what makes other people find Simple Roots Radio who wouldn't otherwise hear about it. Yes, iTunes uses these ratings and reviews to show the podcast to other people who may be interested in learning more about realistic health changes that can last a lifetime. So to leave a rating and review, just head on over to simplerootswellness.com backslash review or find Simple Roots Radio on iTunes. You can just search for it in the iTunes search bar Find it, leave an honest rating and review. I read every single one of them and they really do mean the world to me. So if you want entered in that giveaway, which I'm gonna share next week on the 100th episode, you have to have left a rating or review. You can do that now or anytime because everyone who's done it will be entered into the giveaway. But here's the deal. You only have to leave one rating and review. Like you can't keep multiplying them. Literally, it's a once and done kind of thing. It only takes two minutes out of your day. I talk about it all the time because it really is one of the most important things at making this show go forward. So make sure you do that. And again, thank you so much for being here. And just a reminder that you can find all of the information that we talk about today in the show and any show over in the show notes, which can be found on my website at simperitswellness.com. Usually you can find them at simperitswellness.com backslash the episode number. So for instance, today's all the show notes and even a free download that's gonna help you with this habit formation, kind of hacking your mind, can be found at simperitswellness.com backslash 099. And before we get started, I do wanna tell you about our sponsor, which helps pay for the show and make it what it is today. That sponsor is Banish. I talked about them a few episodes ago, and I really just wanna come back on here and tell you how much I am loving Banish. So Banish is an all-natural skincare brand that is focused on fading, scarring, and acne scars. It was actually created by a lady named Daisy who had acne and some scarring since third grade. Acne products weren't really working for her, and as she researched more natural options, she discovered that reducing inflammatory-causing agents, like we talk about on the show, and using natural ingredients helped her acne scars. So she wanted to share what she did and the dramatic results others have had by creating the products in the Banish line. It's a line of products that gets to the root of the problem, which you know I love, not just cover them up temporarily. How the Banish products work is there's a core product in the Banish kit, which comes with a banisher and Banish oil. The banisher is based on a collagen induction therapy. It's actually a tool that you use on your face. It's not a product. And if we look at the skin, then we know that it's made up mostly of collagen. But as we age, the ability of our skin to renew itself decreases. So the banisher, this tool, helps by creating microscopic holes in the skin. You just roll it over your skin, which tricks the skin into thinking it's injured. Therefore, skin will go into repair mode and make new collagen. 
This tool combined with a banish oil will help stimulate the production of collagen and elastin fibers working to banish scarring and rejuvenate and revitalize your skin. The banish oil is basically a vitamin C serum containing ascorbic acid, which is the most potent form of vitamin C. Together again with a banisher, it will help fade the look of fine lines, uneven texture, hyperpigmentation, or scarring without any downtime. Honestly, I started using the banish system about a month ago and I don't really have acne scarring. I was just blessed in that area, but I do have a very uneven skin tone and I am noticing fine lines or AKA wrinkles as what my kids call them. I started using the bandage kit a few months ago and honestly, it has made such a huge difference in my own skin. And again, I don't have the acne scarring, but I have noticed how much brighter and healthier my skin is. I really, really do like it and I just feel good overall about using it. I really encourage you that whether you have acne scars or you just want to help rejuvenate your skin and make it more youthful looking, that you check out the Banish products. You can find them at www.banish.com. And make sure when you're over there, you check out the before and after results because they are pretty remarkable. It's definitely an innovative system that is easy to use with quick results. My skin has really never felt better. The good news is the ingredients are all natural and plant-based. Plus, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee policy, which means if you don't love it, you don't have to keep it. You know it's good when it comes with the guarantee. So make sure you check out the Banish kit at Banish.com and use code SIMPLEROOTS, all one word, for $10 off your Banish order. Seriously, you're going to want to check it out. And make sure you follow my IGTV channel at Alexa Sherm to get more tutorial videos on how I use the Banish kit and how you can use it in your own life. So head on over there to do that. Plus, check out all the other videos I'm uploading in daily videos on tips, tricks, and hacks to help you get healthy, live happy, and find more joy. That's a different story, but check it out. In the meantime, we have to get started with today's episode, which is breaking bad habits and creating healthy rhythms. Now, I kind of changed the name of habits to rhythms, but they can kind of go back and forth. The reason I like the word rhythms better is because I feel like these habits aren't just things sitting by themselves. They're not just boxed-in actions that we take, but I look at life as more rhythmatic. Everything kind of flows together and your actions overlap and they all kind of have one meaning to them. I mean, of course, they all mean something different, but in general, they're all helping us to reach the end goal. Most of what we're talking about today, I'll refer to them as habits. But when I got into this topic, of course, it goes along with a mindset journey that we've been going on. And I'm going to try and link all of that information or the big points of the past podcast together to help us to be able to form habits that last forever. Now, when I started researching this topic and digging in a little bit more, I came across a statistic that was really alarming to me. It came from a book called Insight, and it was by an organizational psychologist named Tasha Urich, who conducted a series of surveys and found that 95% of people think they're self-aware, but actually only 10 to 15 truly are. And I bring this up because I believe that self-awareness is the key to change, which if you've been following along in the summer series, then hopefully you learn this in the last few podcasts. If not, I'm gonna break down the big points here so that you have them and we can start to build on this. So the five big points that we've had in the past few podcasts are one, we are driven by our emotions. We're not driven by our goals, our wishes, or our dreams, but the emotions backing them up. And that's gonna be important in today's podcast. Number two is we operate 80% of our life from an unconscious or subconscious mindset. So only 10 to 15% of our life is actually operated in a conscious state. I know that sounds absurd, but think about it. Like think about driving your car. Have you ever gotten somewhere and you thought, oh my gosh, I don't remember anything about that, that drive. Praise Jesus, I made it here, right? But that's us operating out of our unconscious mind. It's okay that we are not conscious about everything that we do because our unconscious mind is very aware and rhythmatic in what it does. Point number three is that no one strategy will ever work for everyone because we're all different and we have to own that. That came from last week's podcast all about personality types and really having, again, that understanding of who you are, that self-awareness. Number four is, is that our emotions, our mindset, and our beliefs influence our actions and our health. So the big thing with this one was, is that Our thoughts are not just things, but they're things that influence a host of other things. 
So our thoughts are actually having a big impact on our life and what we take in and our beliefs impact our subconscious or our unconscious mind, which is where we react to 80% of life and our subconscious mind isn't aware of reality. It works off of our beliefs. Again, something that's gonna be important today. And number five is that we have to be willing to look in to change out. So if you look at all of that and like combine it all together and we look at our life and we think, okay, we want to get to point B, but how do we do that, right? So if we're at point A and we want to get to point B, the simple solution and the driving force is that it's all about our emotions. It's all about our beliefs and working with our unconscious brain. If we look at our life and we think, okay, here we are. We're right here, right? You You see yourself here and you want to get to point B, whether that's to lose weight, to feel healthier, to get rid of your autoimmune disease, to get out of financial debt, to be more successful in your business, whatever it is. And it could be the combination of all of those things. How do we do that, right? There are a lot of paths to take, but there's really only one path to point B. And so when we combine all of these things and what we know about change is that it's simple. We can only get to point B through the emotion backing that change. And that emotion is gonna take us in multiple different directions, and so we have to have the right emotion leading to the right direction. Now, if this is making no sense, stick with me. I promise I'm gonna break this down more. If we back up a second, we can see that oftentimes we're making this journey from point A to B a lot longer than it needs to, and the reason we do this And that is because of our natural tendency. And our natural tendency of human life is to find stability. In biology, we call this equilibrium or reaching homeostasis. For instance, in the body, our body is employing hundreds and hundreds of feedback loops to keep your blood pressure stable, your body temperature stable, your glucose level stable, calcium levels in check, and many other processes stable. And again, that's called the equilibrium. But interestingly, in the book called Mastery, the author George Leonard points out that our daily lives also develop their own levels of homeostasis. So we'll fall into patterns for how often we do or don't do something. And over time, this becomes our new equilibrium. So what we're learning is that it's not just like our, like our biology is not just impacted by our environment, but our thoughts as well. And we know now that our thoughts also have their own homeostatic rhythm to them, right? It's it's what we do day in and day out. So when you look at bad habits, we can see that even if it's the wrong equilibrium, our body likes consistency so much that that ice cream binge that you have at 9.30 every night And I try to tell you to give it up, right? Like you just think, oh, I'll just give it up. But every night at 9.30, you crave something more. You crave that ice cream. That's not necessarily your body wanting it. It's just It just craves stability and that equilibrium so much that it will crave things on the dot, even if it's the wrong equilibrium. But here's the thing. Our brains and our biology crave consistency and stability so much that it might trigger craving at the same time every night just because that's what you've conditioned it to do. So most people would assume that the best way to overcome a bad habit such as this is through a process called radical change, right? Like, I'm just going to quit it. I'm just going to give it up. So you change your diet altogether. You go low carb, maybe even keto, and you commit never to eat a carb again. Basically, basically, you go in thinking, I'm going to change my diet. I'm going to change my exercise regimen. I'm going to change my relationships. And you flip them 180 degrees in a different direction in the same day at the same time and expect big results. I mean, we see this in business too, right? Like we hear all the time. If you want massive results, you have to take massive action. But if we flow with our natural tendency to find stability, anytime your body feels unstable, it's going to try to reboot. Like it's going to resist that change a little bit. And there's a period of energy that it takes to be aware of this. A level of resistance, you might say. And our resistance that our body feels to these massive change you're trying to create is proportionate to the size and speed of the change, not whether the change is favorable or unfavorable. In other words, the faster you try to change, the more likely you are to backslide because this pursuit of rapid change creates a number of obstacles, counteracting forces, and make you feel uncomfortable. So to break that down, Basically, when we go in life and we try to create new habits, we're doing it all wrong. We're doing it with the mindset of all or none. We're doing it with the mindset of, I have to completely change my health in order to get healthy. But that's not the case at all. In fact, that can create more resistance in your body and in time prevent you from doing anything at all. So we wanna try to prevent that and create 
habits the right way. So if we understand that inside our body, that there's an equilibrium, a stability that your body craves, but yet you want to see change, then we have to find this threshold for when change becomes too much for our body to handle and it rejects anything and everything that you're throwing at it, right? It like puts up this wall and says, no, thank you. So there's a point, a threshold in which we can reach that we push our body either over into this rejection phase or we can push it into lasting change because at the end of the day, change is going to be uncomfortable. And we have to understand that breaking habits and creating new ones doesn't mean that you have to push yourself beyond boundaries your body can withstand, but it's about being comfortably uncomfortable, not miserable. (laughs) So there's a little bit of a difference. So change is obviously gonna be uncomfortable. It's gonna push you out of your norm, but it shouldn't make you miserable. So if you think about daily diets or quote unquote traditional diets, right? And starving yourself and hitting a certain number of calories or working out for a number of days, that can really make you miserable. That misery isn't creating change, it's creating resistance inside your body and we don't want that. So we're trying to prevent that by not overstepping that boundary or that threshold which puts you there. Instead, we wanna try and stay within that threshold of pushing yourself to maybe a little bit of uncomfort but not misery. I don't know if you've heard of the idea of 1% for infinity, and that means every day you just change 1%, and you do this day in and day out, in time you see massive change. So it's not going from point A to point B overnight, but it's rather going all these little steps along the way, and eventually you reach that massive change. The idea of steady change, not an overnight success, but unfortunately, of course, our culture has trained us to be instantly gratified. I mean, I know this all too well. I've stayed up a little too late many times binge watching my favorite Netflix shows because they're available. They're there and I think, oh, if I just watch another one, it'll make me feel better or maybe I can get more of the storyline. I'm the worst about this, to be honest. This instant gratification tells us when we want something, we want it now and we don't want to have to work to get it. Unfortunately, while this sounds appetizing, just like a quick fix or popping a pill might be, Our mindset can really only handle so much change at any given time. So again, this goes back to our conscious and unconscious and subconscious mind, which is a lot to spit out. But basically, our conscious mind, or where we're operating only 10 to 15% of our day from, that is our reality, right? That's where we see reality, where we are face to face. Our unconscious and subconscious minds don't work based on reality. They work based on beliefs. So while we can actively change our conscious mind where most people are trying to work, what we really need to do to see real habit formation and real change occur is change our unconscious mind. And that can't be done by simply working harder and doing better. In fact, that restriction mindset really works against our natural biology to survive. So if we take an example of how this is gonna work, right? Our reality is that we wanna lose weight or we wanna get healthier and so we think that we need to cut calories. So in 10 to 15% of our day in our aware, conscious mind, we can actively do that by limiting the food that we take in. But our belief behind that is that we're restricting, we're starving ourselves. I'm, I'm really, you're really not sold on this idea. And so what happens in your unconscious and subconscious mind is it doesn't realize that there's food on every corner. Heck, you could have food to feed a small army in your house. Your body doesn't know that. And so what's happening is in 80% of your daily life or how your body is working, it's working out of the unconscious mind based on your beliefs. So if you don't really believe in that diet, you don't really believe you can lose weight and you're starving yourself on top of that, your body's probably gonna go into restriction and starvation mode, which means conserve and store everything that it can to prevent the famine it thinks is coming on. So I don't know if that made sense, but it's a little glimpse of our awareness only happens in 10 to 15% of our daily life to the other 80% stems from our beliefs backing that or our emotions not our reality. And you can burn a lot of bridges here. So just to break this down into realistic terms, because I'm I'm rambling about things that I'm super excited for, but um, maybe I'm not communicating clearly. So let me break this down into four reasons why you probably have a hard time breaking bad habits. And then let's talk about ways that you can create lasting change forever. 
So reason one, you can't break bad habits is it's easy to go with the flow. Again, our body craves consistency. So what you'll find is that you kind of go with what the natural flow is. If you're out and about and you're on a quote unquote diet and everyone's eating something that's not on your diet, it's easier to go with the flow and just splurge and tell yourself, oh yeah, I'll just get back on track later, right? It's easy to go with what other people are doing rather than just stopping and looking at yourself. Reason number two is that bad habits can feel really good. This is really hard because instant gratification, what we talked about earlier, our thoughts are releasing neurotransmitters and neuropeptides and hormones, which are communicating with our body. And a lot of times, instant gratification or bad habits feel really good because they are releasing feel-good hormones and neuropeptides and neurotransmitters like dopamine. So like we know drugs, right? Like we know drugs are not good for us, but they're addictive and they're addictive because they release these neurotransmitters that make us feel really good. The same goes with checking social media. Did you know every time you check social media and you get a comment or a like, it releases dopamine in your brain, which makes you want to go back for more and more and more. It's that instant gratification that feels really good in the short term, but long term really doesn't add up to much. The same goes through plowing through your coworkers' candy on their desk. Like it feels good in the moment because sugar also releases neurotransmitters that make you feel good for a short period of time. So yes, they do and can make you feel good. So that's where we talk about being uncomfortably comfortable, but not miserable. And reason number three is that they are often the path of least resistance. So again, it's comfortable, right? There's not a lot of work to get to point B when you just stay in point A. Like the bad habits are easy. They're ingrained in you. You don't have to think about them. You don't really have to do anything with them. And it becomes one last decision that you have to make in a day. Reason number four is they reinforce beliefs about ourselves. Yes, often these bad habits are just backing up the emotions that we're feeling. And this is the biggest point that I want you to get is that the emotional component is the critical factor in change. And our belief system is what's creating 80% of our daily action coming from our subconscious brain. And so without the right belief system, we're really never going to see outward change. And so we really have to change at our core inwardly. Our identity has to be firmly placed in order to see the outward effects of that. And that's what we're gonna talk about in this last part of how do we create healthy habits that last a lifetime. Step one in changing your behavior for good is that you have to start believing new things about yourself. Just like I said in step four of why you can't overcome your bad habits is because they're directly proportionate to the belief system that you have about your body and about the things that you're doing. So if you don't believe in it, you'll never do it. And I'm preaching to the choir on this one. (laughs) This is something that I definitely have to work on because I constantly find myself talking negatively about myself or saying I can't do that or I'm not good at that. Even here podcasting, I'm thinking in my head, oh my gosh, I'm not making any sense. No one is understanding what I'm saying. I'm just spewing out words and it makes no sense. What are you doing, Alexa? This isn't for you. Here's the thing. That makes it harder to continuously get into a rhythm of being better and not being so relying on other things to make this work and instead just being myself. So we have, I, and we, I assume you're in the same boat, we have these consonant beliefs, negative beliefs about ourselves. So we have to go back to our identity. Now there's three layers of behavior change. One is your appearance, which is the way the world perceives you. Number two is your performance and the act, this is the actions you take. And number three is your identity, the person that you believe you are. So if we look at this, it's think of it as a sphere, right? Like your appearance is the outer layer. You move in a little bit and that come, becomes your performance. And at the core is your identity. Now, most of us are trying to create change outside on our appearance. We want to look differently. We want to dress differently. We want to appear to be great. Like social media has fed this so much. But outward change out here It can't happen and it won't last. Like this isn't you. Your outward appearance and trying to change that without changing the core of who you are means that you're like constantly fighting this inward battle. Like your, your actions you take don't really know what to believe. The middle layer of where change really happens, your performance, it doesn't know whether to believe your appearance or your identity. And oftentimes it defaults to your identity. Sure, maybe in the short term, trying to change your appearance will change your actions 
decisions, but long-term, you're automatically gonna default back to your identity. And I'm gonna show this in the show notes. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, head to the show notes and I'll make this more clear. But again, the three layers of behavior change are your appearance, which is the outward section of the sphere, and that's the way the world perceives you. Number two is if you move in a little bit, it's your performance and that's the actions you take. And at the core is your identity and that's the person you believe you are. So to create lasting change, we have to understand that every single action you perform is driven by a fundamental belief that it is possible. The only way to change your actions is again to look inward and that's to change your identity. And this is knowing that emotions, your beliefs, what you value are the only way to create change. But again, too often we live in this external world of trying to change our appearance, maybe even our performance, but this doesn't work, at least not long term, because if we don't understand and change our identity, we'll never really change. The question is, what's your identity? What do you believe about yourself and what are you seeing that? Like, whose are you? What's your purpose? And what are you living for? Those are really deep questions, but I think without asking ourselves those, we have nothing to stand on. We don't really have any weight to this and we don't have any emotions to back it up. Otherwise, we kind of live in emotional chaos is what I call it. And I and I say this because I've been there. I'm working on this, right? Of really knowing my identity and takes time to change that, especially when you don't have a great identity to begin with. But Identity crisis is really a a scary place to be in because you don't know whose you are, you don't know what you do, and you can make impulse decisions and, and live for all the wrong reasons. And so at the core, we have to understand whose we are, what we're here for, what our purpose is, and what we're gonna live for. And if we don't know that, then I really believe, and I'll make a bold statement here, I believe you'll never see the change that you want to see. You might half halfway get there, you might get there, for a little bit, but you won't stay there and you kind of always crash back. You'll always crash back to ground zero because you don't know what it is that you really believe about yourself. So I think the first and foremost and maybe the most important of the entire mindset is knowing your identity. And maybe in a later podcast, we can talk and break down more about your identity. I know I'm gonna have one coming up in a couple of weeks to really help you do this. But over in the show notes, I'm gonna give you a handout on helping you to dig into what is it that you identify with and really getting to know who you are. Because again, this is the most important thing that you need to change. The second practice is using the three emotional cues that I'm gonna give you to help you put your identity into practice. And those cues are emotional awareness, emotional intelligence, and emotional fitness. So the first thing, once you know your identity, Then to create habits, you have to live more self-aware. And we've talked about awareness and that is only 10 to 15% of your daily life. But you also have to be emotionally aware. So not just aware of your environment, but emotionally aware of your mental state, of what your thoughts are and what your beliefs are backing up the action that you're taking. Now, of course, this isn't an easy task because awareness takes being present and sometimes it's hard to be present. Like sometimes it's easier again just to go through life and um, go through the motions, but that's just living with your bad habits. If you want to create new habits, we really have to become aware emotionally of where we are on any given day. So things to think about, like notice when you're overwhelmed and upset. What do you do? Do you find yourself emotionally plowing through a bag of chips because you're sad? Do you pull out the ice cream at the end of the day because you're lonely? And are you sleeping in because you're simply so stressed that you can't get yourself out of bed? Like know your triggers, know those emotions, and then know what you do and your belief behind them. And that goes into emotional intelligence. Now you know what that emotion is that you're feeling. What is it causing you to do in your body? And how can you respond differently? As the quote says, make change so easy that you can't say no. So you have to know your emotion, know how you're responding to that, and then create change based off of that. So rather than the stability of, I have this emotion, I'm lonely, I'm gonna eat ice cream, you know that trigger, and now you're gonna start to replace that emotion. So I'm lonely, but reading a good book makes me feel not so lonely. I'm lonely, but calling a friend helps me out. I'm lonely, but taking me a dog on a walk and getting into nature makes that go away. So kind of knowing your trigger, and then changing the emotion behind it to be more positive. 
Another way you can use emotional intelligence is through the domino effect. So finding one thing or one area in your life that you are really willing and desiring to change and seeing if that is what they call keystone habits or master habits or these master rhythms that are create the domino effect or a chain reaction. Like for instance, some people say that making their bed in the morning helps them to pick up and be more organized throughout the day. Or morning exercise helps you make better diet decisions all day long. So what are those keystone habits that you could incorporate into your life that you actually desire to do that come with a real positive emotion that will cascade down into all other areas of your life? I mean, you can flip this and say this works the same way for negative habits too. Like checking your phone might lead to social media binge or one piece of candy leads to junk the rest of the day or browsing social media leads to another 20 minutes of procrastination. Like there's all these things in a negative way that we are doing that leading that are leading to this negative spiral kind of out of control. And I hear this all the time in the diet world of, well, I blew my diet, so I'm gonna start again on Monday. But here's the thing about this is if we start to take the domino effect and we incorporate that with mastering the restart or finding one thing that you can do whenever you're having that emotion or whenever you get off track, because we're all going to get off track at some point, what's the one thing that you can do that automatically pulls you back in to the right path? That domino effect of, okay, I'm going to keep moving in the right direction. So say, for instance, you have, you pop open a can of Pringles and you eat the whole thing, right? Like, Once you pop, you just can't stop. That's what they say. And it's so true with Pringles. But you do that and then you think, oh, I just failed. I lost it. But instead of waiting, instead of waiting to get back on track until the next day or until Monday starts again, what can you do in that moment that will get you back on track right away? Like we want to master the restart as soon as we get back off. We don't want to let that negativity control us and control the emotions for the rest of the day. Instead, let's take it back into our control and say, okay, If I eat a whole can of Pringles, I am automatically going to make a green smoothie and follow it up with that. Like I'm going to get back on track immediately. Okay, so I miss my workout in the morning. I overslept. I'm going to take walking shoes to work and I'm going to walk over my lunch today. So having that restart, like I automatically going to do X, Y, and Z to pick up whatever I feel like I failed in or that's going to cause me to get off track, automatically find that restart. And again, it goes back to the domino effect of, All things are really interconnected and it capitalizes on the core principles of human behavior, commitment and consistency. So if you're looking for what to start with when it goes to emotional intelligence, you have to start with the thing that you're most motivated to do and then do it consistently. So maybe you want nothing to do with changing your diet, but you kind of want to start working out again. Like you like the way you feel when you're stronger. So sign up for a gym membership or take a fitness class or call a buddy and start walking in the morning. Don't focus so much on everything but the one thing that you desire to do and just naturally let that momentum roll into all other areas of your life. Because the thing about habits and life and resolutions and all this stuff is that we try to box all this stuff off, but really at the end of the day, everything's interconnected and it's all going to be linked together. So when in doubt, break it down, but keep going and roll with momentum, which brings us to the last thing, and that's emotional fitness. Continuously work and restart, master the restart, continuously be aware of your emotions and taking time to listen, like taking time just to be with yourself and listen to your body. Emotional fitness comes in of just repetitively knowing yourself. Of course, self-awareness right away is a really hard thing to do. Most people don't even know who they are and again, don't know their identity. So the best way, just like getting in shape, it doesn't happen overnight. It takes fitness. It takes consistently working on it day in and day out and being willing to just get back up and keep going in order to see the results that you want to do. And that's what you have to do in the emotional mindset, creating good habit space is that you just have to be willing to keep working, to keep being aware and to keep focusing 
on the positive emotions rather than the negative. And for me, sometimes this looks like, and I'm gonna give you some tips over on IGTV, but for me, it might look like, okay, I'm gonna write down this belief that I'm constantly having about myself, or I constantly feel like it's gonna happen. I write that down and I flip it over and I write a true statement. Because again, our beliefs don't automatically mean it's reality. So I'm gonna flip that over and give it a true statement. Because again, our beliefs aren't always right. A lot of times they're false. Um, Self-protection and survival is very ingrained inside of us. Um, And so we have to get our body to a place where it trusts us in a mindset that's truthful. And so again, I just take a little note card. I write down the lie that I'm believing and then I flip it over and I write down a couple of true statements. And anytime I'm having that, I can go back and say, okay, this is what's true. And just remind my body that the lie doesn't mean we're trying to survive. The lie is a lie and here's what's true. And so we can take a deep breath with that. So again, finding ways to use emotional fitness of being aware um, of being uncomfortably comfortable, but not miserable of pushing yourself, but really desiring to do so from a good mindset, not a bad one. And when you begin to implement different and better habits into your everyday routine, you can impact your life and create the environment you desire. And I promise you that the right mindset can change your life. You know, it's so often that we hear the right diet will change your life or the right body, but that's not the case at all. The right mindset will pull it all together. And this will bring about so much peace to your life. And it all starts with one decision. And that's what are you gonna commit yourself to? Remember, here's the key thing. Your life goals are not your habits. But it's important to remember that lasting change is a product of daily habits, not once in a lifetime transformations. We're not going for the all and none. We're going for the 1% infinity, 1% change for the rest of your life. And the key to building lasting habits is focusing on creating your new identity first. Your current behaviors are simply a reflection of your current identity. So what you do now is a mirror image of the type of person you believe that you are, either consciously or subconsciously. So take a minute and think, Who are you and what do you believe about yourself? Because that will change everything. Again, coming up in future podcasts, we're gonna talk about your identity and even doing a mindset detox because what you fill your mind with is obviously having an impact on your body. So if you're reading all the magazines about all the ways to lose 20 pounds, you're probably never gonna lose 20 pounds, right? Because you have the wrong mindset about it. You have a belief that another system is going to work and that your system is not going to work. And so we have to start believing and backing up what we want with the positive emotions, the right mindset, and that all comes from having the right identity. So stay tuned in the coming weeks to talk about identity. But before we go there, we have a special psychologist that's going to come on and talk a little bit more about behavior change and and how we can really implement this into our life. So stay tuned as we do that. I hope that today's podcast was beneficial. Again, I'm sitting here believing all the lies about myself and about how I just spew information out, but here's the short recap. We are driven by emotion, and the only way to change outwardly is to change our inward being, and that means we have to come to the core of who we are and know that our identity is what creates change. Our identity is where our actions lie, and those actions create our appearance. So start with the identity, get to the core, ask yourself the hard questions, and start to back up your decisions and where you want to go with positive emotions. And remember, it's not an all or none. Hustle will not make this go faster. It really boils down to making small, consistent change. Stability is what your body wants and not pushing it over the threshold to be uncomfortably comfortable but not miserable. That's what we're going for. Remember, find your identity and then start practicing emotional awareness, emotional intelligence, and emotional fitness. Start pulling that all into your life. And remember, I have a handout for all of this information over on the blog at simperitswellness.com backslash 099. And over there, I talk about five habits you should be adding into your daily life. And it's easy things. And I hope that this helps change your mindset. So stay tuned for more episodes coming your way about the mindset. I hope that you have really enjoyed this series. I would love to know how it's going for you, what changes you have seen. Feel free to email me at alexa at And if you have any other questions or 
ideas for future topics that you'd like me to dig into more of, I love to hear from you. So please don't hesitate to shoot me an email or leave a comment on the post or social media. Again, if you want to follow me more, my daily life, make sure you, when you're over at the blog, you sign up for my email list and you'll get weekly tips, tricks, and hacks, challenges, and other things that we have going on and more insight into my own life, as well as follow me at Instagram at Alexa Sherm and Facebook at Simperitz Wellness. Like I said earlier, I started an IGTV channel, which has been a lot of fun, where I give short and I, I really try to make them five minutes or less, which hasn't been going super well, but I promise they're like five to six minutes. All these videos are that give you little tricks that you can incorporate into your life and just live healthier because I really believe it's not about restricting or it's not about deprivation, but it's about making small changes. Like, can we weed out the bad with the good? So just focusing more on incorporating good things rather than bad things. So over there, I show you how to do things like making an armpit detox mask. How do I make my matcha? Why you should maybe think about not snacking and other tutorials and tips like how I store lemon juice for my warm lemon water in the morning. Like all the things can be found on the IGTV channel. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Don't forget to head to the show notes at simpleheartswellness.com backslash 099. Leave that rating a review because next week we have a special giveaway and don't forget to check out Banish. They really are amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for tuning in. Next week, I'll be back with an expert followed by the podcast on finding your identity. So stay tuned and have a great week. Oh, and don't forget, Friday is another one of your most embarrassing health questions. So make sure you come back here because we have four more of those episodes to finish up and they are getting deep. So come back to learn more about that. In the meantime, don't forget to check out the show notes. Have a good one. See you then.